okay. Well, hello to people if you're watching. Um, I can't really say hello to people if you aren't watching, so I guess that was a little redundant, but hello. <laughs> uh, this is episode 133, I think. Very, really good. Uh, today, I am not alone. I am here with um, Brenda Davies from God is Gray. Um, so hello. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thanks for uh, agreeing to... Uh, to come on. I, um, the people who are watching who aren't, um, I guess familiar with, if you didn't watch my video about, uh, Dr. Witnesser, um, everyone's favorite, uh, <laughs> Fortnite streamer, everyone's favorite gamer. Um, I ended the video saying that, um, asking people, f uh, to like send me a, uh, Christian content creator who doesn't, uh, suck. <laughs> like super hard so uh, a lot of people were tagging you and mentioning you so my apologies for probably getting that out of out of nowhere but um thanks for uh you know being uh open to come on the podcast and talk about god <laughs> <laughs> and all that um we're i guess get you saved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today is the uh i, I just convert mid podcast <laughs> You just start crying and weeping. <laughs> we're like, oh my God, you guys. <laughs> that'd be crazy. I mean, that'd be a good uh, clickbait title, right? <laughs> Convert <Chris gets> mid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess, so you you said you uh, describe yourself as a, uh, oh my God, the phone is going. Oh my, oh my gosh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, wow, this is off to a terrible start. <laughs> yeah, I'm already taking <laughs> it all so Lord's offensive. name in vain. Um, no, I guess you, uh, you, Describe yourself as a uh, a progressive Christian, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So, you want do you want to just give like the elevator pitch, like the um, Shark Tank pitch for uh, for progressive <laughs> Christianity to those for people who don't aren't really like familiar with it? Yeah, definitely. Um, I grew up as an evangelical Christian, and so progressivism or progressive Christianity is really a brand new term that I wasn't aware of when I was like crawling out of the evangelical space, right? Like bleeding from all of the toxic theology and all of the pain that I suffered in that space. And um, progressive Christianity is basically, or even my channel, I say that I advocate for sex positive, LGBTQ plus, affirming, science believing, intellectual Christianity. Wow. And um, unfortunately, those are all things that you are not allowed to be or affirm <laughs> as an evangelical, which has driven a lot of us insane. So now here we are as a movement of people called progressives. That's amazing. Yeah. I um. Yeah, I mean, I guess I think I, I I touched on it briefly in my video about like my um sort of relationship with Christianity, how um how it's sort of like my family isn't religious, obviously, so that I feel like that played a big part of why I'm not religious. Um, mm -hmm. but even like the story that I told at the beginning of my video, how like I was almost sort of. <laughs> It was weird how they sort of like my friend Joshua, who was like my good friend Joshua, and you're a kid. You don't like you're not talking about religion on the on the you know playground. You're like picking your nose and stuff and running around. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, that's what I did. <laughs> that's all I did. But um, so it was weird how he was like, you should you gotta come to my church now. It's like weird how they sort of like used, kind of used him in a way to like try, try to like indoctrinate me, which is very. Mm -hmm. Which is very weird. Always, I guess it sort of left a very bad taste in my mouth uh, about, um, I guess, religion. Um, yeah. And I always sort of thought that religion and science couldn't really coincide. So it's interesting that you said that, um, that you're like science yeah. believing, which is nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, a huge part of what brought us all here is just like the incredible frustration of not being heard and listened to and also so much cognitive dissonance. You know, it's like the Bible says we're made in God's image and that God is love and Jesus's greatest command is to love your neighbor. And then 
there's this sexual ethic where gay people can't be gay and some of them commit suicide over it. Yeah. And I'm just like, how that doesn't make sense. But when you are in an evangelical or, you know, certain other spaces like Baptist or any number of other sects of Christianity, and you mm-hmm. bring up those concerns or you say like, this isn't working or we're doing this wrong, like what's happening? We have all been silenced, dismissed, just threatened with hell, just told, you know, basically to screw off. And right. um, in, and I want to say in kinder ways, but not really. Like I <laughs> was in a Talk church in shit. LA. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> um, I was in a church in LA. Right. Let me see. Let me go in, in a little bit of an order. So I basically had a very intuitive communication with divinity from a young age. And I definitely grant the idea that because I am born in Philly and New Jersey and in this certain section of the world Mm -hmm. that was affiliated with God, the Bible and Christianity. If I was in India, maybe I would be Hindu. And I know that is a very controversial thing for Christian to say, but I think it's worth just addressing that regionally we pick up a lot of these narratives that we're given. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was the, I don't want to fucking talk about Dr. Witness for the whole time, but I mean, they were the whole- I know, we can. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's so infuriating and, and preying on the vulnerable when they're just yeah. trying to have a good time, which is, you know, a lot of us were preyed on in our vulnerability. And right. the weird and confusing thing is, it's, it's from a place of, quote, love, which I really sometimes <laughs> think is a place of fear because you're given this narrative, everyone's going to go to hell. You have to go out and save the world or everyone's going to burn in hell for eternity. Right. But this guy, I'm sure, is going on there thinking, I got to save the children. And right. meanwhile, he's just being alienating and cruel and also just misrepresenting things in a stupid way. Like <laughs> saying, oh my God, is not taking God's name in vain. It's yeah. like... It's just so, it's so basic and dumb and threatening. And I'm just like, oh God, dude, you're just pushing everyone so much further away. Exactly. What, okay. So what, what would be taking the Lord's name in vain? <laughs> Cause I never understood even that. I literally, I, that's what I thought it was. Cause I remember like, even when I would say that at school and my teachers would be like, Hey kids, that's a bad word. Or it's like, is it, how would, how would that be a bad word? <laughs> I don't get it. Well, yeah. And most people do think that it's that or feel that guilt. I will say out of anger, I have a personal thing where I will never be like, Jesus Christ or God okay. damn it. Like those actually make me like shrink up and I'm like, Ugh, I don't like it. Right. It just doesn't feel good to me. <laughs> so I, that's my personal definition. Like I feel like just out of honor of the divinity yeah. that I love, I just don't go there. But for sure. But what I really think is taking the Lord's name in vain is using his name to drain money out of people's bank accounts and saying that God commands you to do so. I think taking the Lord's name in vain is telling gay people they're going to hell and that there's something wrong with them. I think taking the Lord's name in vain is saying that Donald Trump is Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, and you have to listen to everything he says. Like, <laughs> Do these- people say that? <laughs> They think Donald Trump is Jesus, is Jesus Christ in person and like reincarnated. Some people have. It got very, very extreme here in the United States. Like no one actually explicitly said that, and that obviously is the most fringe of the perspective. Right. But you know, on the most um, gentle end of that spectrum, you have people that believe that God brings forth leadership, and God brought Donald Trump to us to save us from abortion and trans people and all this stuff um which again i think is taking the lord's name in vain and i'm not even trying to get political like you can be a trump supporter but don't tell me that god sent him to save us because i'm not convinced of that yeah Um, if he did i i'm very uh (laughs) skeptical of god's really uh if he really is you know all good if he's sending someone like donald trump a reality tv star 
He's kind um, of like the antichrist Americans deserve, though. Like with toilet paper <laughs> on his shoe going on to Air Force One. I was like, yeah. if there's an antichrist, that's what we deserve. Like a McDonald's <laughs> eating <laughs> yeah, exactly. guy who's holding his Bible upside down outside of a black church after gassing everybody to get out of the way. <laughs> like, yeah, he that's that's I, Jesus definitely would do that. For sure. Yeah, there is a whole <laughs> passage where Jesus does that. <laughs> where he gasses a, a crowd and holds a Bible upside down. Classic yes. Jesus. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I think, yeah, that's about what I was saying before about uh, Dr. Witnesser. It's like, I, it's how he was like, about like talking to that Muslim child, I'm oh, sorry, Muslim mm. child uh, yeah. who was, he was like urging that like, oh, you, cause you are in here, you are, are part of this religion. Um, you were, you're going to go to hell, but yeah. literally that, like when you said before, like if, if Dr. Witnesser was born somewhere else, like he, pro he wouldn't, he wouldn't just be like, uh, no, still Christianity, still the same thing. It's like, it's just, I feel like you're just a product of, um, your environment. It's like nature nurture type thing. So it was really frustrating when someone is so like, is so close minded about that. Um, I mean, I'm very, I mean, I don't know. I'm also very just like, I'm not close minded to religion, but um, I just don't. Maybe it'll change, but um, <laughs> well, I just I don't telling, see yeah. any uh, appeal to it <laughs> personally. I mean, I totally understand. Like, obviously, why would people? Because it's been it's become in some sections such a bigoted, hateful, angry. Right. Um, and, you know, there's this whole thing, too, about like it's um, white supremacist roots, too, like us going around the world saying that we have the answer and we are the ultimate religion. It was mm -hmm. like white Anglo-Saxon men primarily that were colonizing spaces who already had their own faith practice. Right. And um, to clarify, like I there's something resonant to me about Jesus like and his original name in in the bible is yeshua and when i hear that name my whole like my blood tingles there's something about it that is incredibly resonant and in mm -hmm. that i often wonder if i was born in india and i had a hindu practice i would still be like okay but jesus you know right and um <laughs> because there there is something about that but to go around and say that if you don't feel that same tangle and you don't resonate in the same way I do that there is something wrong with you and you're going to hell is just like it's just the anxiety that we've been given that we're supposed to go out and and evangelize to the world but with right. it comes all of these effed up sexual ethics that are based in fear and shame like and they have yeah. real life consequences like there's this amazing book called um what is it called? Uh, there's You Are Your Own and the book Pure by these two ex-evangelical women. And mm -hmm. they both describe that like people suffer from painful sex, like vaginismus, guys get erectile dysfunction. Right. Gay people, like I said, have committed suicide or felt suicidal ideation, all because pastors will say, God cries when you masturbate. Or if you lose your virginity, <laughs> that you are fundamentally let like worth worth less than and have you ever right. heard of this thing called object exercises uh no I, ha I have not this is why you're so lucky everyone listening <laughs> i was telling curtis before we started that i think he's like so kind you are so kind and like you're so gentle with like hey i'm so respectful of what you believe and i appreciate right. that but like it's okay to have a bit of righteous fury because this stuff is genuinely messed up like yeah. the fact that he did that to that child that muslim child is genuinely mm. not okay it's effed up like there's no way around that and with right. object exercises, what they did to us as girls is they would take like a chocolate bar, for example, and they would uh -huh. pass it around to all the boys in youth group. Every boy would take off a piece of chocolate and that was to symbolize a woman's body. And if, if you're having sex with all these people and all those guys are eating your chocolate, then look at all you have left for your husband when he comes around. You have nothing left for him. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Even oh my worse, God. 
There's worse ones. There's like um, chewing gum, having boys like chew gum and then offer it to each other and be like, can you imagine? That's what your body is like. That's what you're like as a woman. Uh, or having boys spit into a cup one at a time and then saying, would you drink this cup? See, if you do this with a bunch of boys, like you're going to be this dirty glass of water with all this spit in it. Welcome, no to, way. welcome to evangelicalism. Yeah. They, that's like a serious thing that they do. Yeah. And not to go all dark, but like we know the statistics of assault. Not everyone gets to choose when they quote lose their virginity. Which right. Is another term I've abolished. Now I call it a sexual debut because what are you losing? It's an experience. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. But yeah, it's it's been so traumatic on so many different uh, levels. Yeah, that that's fucking crazy. I had no idea that they did shit like that. Yeah. Literally being like, your girls are like this object, right? They're exactly like this object. They are not yeah. human. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's so brutal. I, holy shit. I, uh, <laughs> I, so when you, that makes me think like, um, so when, so you grew up like in that sort of, uh, like environment, very like hyper, like, like sex before marriage is wrong, like that shit, like that's that's what you grew up in, right? I entered it when I was 12 years old. And okay. I'm honestly so grateful for that because I got to like form myself a lot in those 12 years before right. a pastor told me, God cries when you masturbate. And um, PMI <laughs> or whatever, like I've been masturbating since I can remember, like three right. years old or something, which is really normal for girls. So like, I remember hearing that and being like, does he, and even like, God's does crying. God have tear ducts? Like, is he yeah. really crying? Uh, man, <laughs> homeboy, homeboy's crying literally all day if he cries whenever someone fucking I mean, him. Lord, <laughs> seriously. And, um, <laughs> Poor guy. and the accu- I know, the accusation from evangelicals is that I don't have a sexual ethic and I don't care, like have sex with whoever you want and do whatever you want. And it's like, no, I believe in like sex positive, sexual integrity, honoring mm-hmm. your partners, honoring your body, enthusiastic consent. Consent's another word we never heard in evangelical church. As a matter of fact, there's uh, a verse, um, Ephesians 5.22 that says women submit to your husbands. And many, oh, many, many men God. and pastors yes have you used that to say look the bible says you have to uh, screw me tonight oh god to. <laughs> that's so fucking weird <laughs> you're gonna need a shower after this i'm sorry yeah literally. is this supposed to be funny we can keep it more light <laughs> no it's like and it's it, i mean i'm the whole idea of that is i don't it's fucking scary but it is i mean i feel okay so what i what i was thinking um When you were, so if you're in that, um, and you saw how, like, I guess how toxic it was, uh, for lack of a better word, but once you left, like, I, I feel like maybe it's just me, but if I was in that, I would just be like, oh, well, religion is just bad. Like, I don't want that to be to like, I don't like, fuck that. Like I could just do it without, but so what made you, um, I guess sort of keep, the faith keep the faith i guess um like what made you keep believing in like jesus and god and everything that's such a good question um i and i've pondered this a lot it's <laughs> it's because it is like an abusive relationship at the end of the day like when you're in one of these right. toxic evangelical spaces it's like um in abuse and i have been in an abusive relationship it's that um like frog and boiling water scenario where you're in there and you're like, this is fine. And then you're like, this is getting right. warm. And then before you know it, you're boiling and you it's don't know what happened late. because yeah. there's enough like goodness. And I, um, I have a book coming out in April, please pre-order it. If anyone, yeah. interested. It's, plug, yes. plug that book. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, um, on her knees. The double entendre is intentional because it's about me. Like, being the perfect version and then swinging into like hookup culture and going on a tramp page and going nuts mm. and then kind <laughs> of like recentering myself again. But um, mm. I got to reflect a lot while I was writing that book. And I was just like, how did this happen to me? 
And I realized right. that it was because when I was really, really young and I was like praying at my bedside for wars to end and, and for, wow. you know, the hungry to be fed, I had a very in, inherent, pure connection. And I really felt that in my, in my spirit. So then mm. it was just up to someone later in my life, 12 years old, our sexy youth pastor, Pastor Scott with his hookah shell necklace. Ooh. Like Pastor Scott. So cool. <laughs> he was he was a hottie. And um and yeah, he he was the one that was like, Hey, did you know that like this thing you love that you've loved since you were young, like since you were can remember cries when you masturbate did you know that it breaks his heart if you have sex with someone else did you know that if you really want to honor that love like you can't have sex with women and you can't you know and all these other things and like you're just so primed for it and and there is right. a balance of good like i am so grateful that they told me i was intelligent enough to read the bible on my own because i grew up in catholicism so it was kind of like this inaccessible thing and mm. um and that was really empowering or that I could pray or that I had spiritual gifts or like right. just all of these things that were actually genuinely really badass that I love that I've carried through into my life now. And it, it's like that cell. It's like, if you get enough yeses, like, well, this is great. Well, this is great. And also community, Curtis, like there were so many babe boys there. I was a nerd in high school <laughs> and there was all these evangelical hotties. And True. The they, best kind of hotties. The best kind of hotties. You can't touch them. You can't look them. You can't have sex <laughs> with them. But they're there. Yeah. They're everywhere. <laughs> and you're talking about sex constantly, which also was a huge sell for me because I don't know how it is in Canada. Maybe you can tell me, but our sex education is one of the worst in the developed world in America. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, Canada's not very good either. It was, I think the only sex that I had was like, um, it was like our gym, my gym, our gym teacher. It's always the gym teacher. It's always a gym teacher <laughs> <laughs> because it's like gym and health, I guess. So it's like, they separated the boys and the girls, and then they were like, "Which is so uh, dumb, by the way." Yeah, like, that's. I think about maybe, that now. Yeah, you might maybe gonna have sex with that other sex. Maybe you want to learn right. about their body. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was yeah, it was like him. Uh, and you could just tell he didn't want to fucking do it at all. No one wants to. <laughs> he's a gym teacher. He doesn't want to be like, hey, so. <laughs> hey kids listen up we're gonna talk about <laughs> fucking um i remember i specifically remember he had like he used like two pylons okay like wait and pylons. he you know how you oh know the pylons? orange cones yeah okay like, he had two of those and he kind of like you know how they stack are you kidding I'm, me? Not, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Did he roll was... a giant condom over it before? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have been really funny. A huge fucking condom. That is um, pathetic. Yeah. He was oh, like, I feel God. like it was, it might've been him trying to be funny, but I was like, I, but that's, it was like an after, not even an afternoon. It was one, like, de like one class. And that was all like the extent of sex ed. And the rest was like, I don't know, stuff I heard from like, older kids i guess i don't know so it's yeah. yeah it's definitely it's not any better in canada it's it's not very now good. i know i can't believe it i thought you guys would be more way more progressive than that the the people that are doing it well are all like the netherlands for example is just yeah. killing it they have the lowest rate of abortion lowest rate of unwanted pregnancy lowest stds and they have wow. comprehensive sex ed since like five years old and americans are terrified of that yeah Americans are terrified of that, but um, it's all age appropriate. It's like you're telling five-year-olds, like, don't, this is the name of your body part. And this is, you know, you know, right. don't let anyone touch it or it is for pleasure, which is another mm -hmm. thing we never talk about your right to pleasure no. and that sex is supposed to not just be fear of STDs. You're also supposed to be like communing with someone and you're yeah. both supposed to be experiencing pleasure. Right, exactly. Yeah, it was always just like, well, more so. It was kind of also like re how they talk about religion too. It's all just like uh, based on like fear and stuff, and like bad the bad parts of it. It's like you can't, like literally the whole time it was just like you don't just don't do it, just don't <laughs> don't do it because then because <laughs> then you'll 
then it's fine. You won't get obviously pregnant because you're not doing it. But or you know that mean girl know. scene. Right. You you yeah. will get an STD and die. And die. <laughs> Grab very, a <laughs> Very, very accurate. Yeah, for sure. And my um, progressive Christian argument to that is the Bible says over 90 times not to fear or some variation of that. And and then we ironically built our entire religion on fear. Yeah. So it's really the antithesis. Like I think the opposite of love isn't hate. The opposite of love is fear because right. fear leads to every, every bad thing. And yeah. And if we're talking about sex ed too, now everyone has porn and that has become the new sex education. And I've even heard interviews with porn stars where they're like, don't put this pressure on us. We, we yeah. are just doing our job. Like you cannot be relying on us to like. Cause that's not realistic at all. No. And no one's yeah. like, now we're putting on a condom and do you consent to this? And right. like, I mean, it's the opposite. It's like, it can be very abusive and very toxic examples and, and also bad angles. Like <laughs> I, I'm not into porn because like, I can always tell the girls not in pleasure. Like I've, right. I've, I have a lot of reasons like with trafficking and stuff, it's very complicated. It's not all ethically sourced, which is a big um, for moral sure. dilemma for me. But then beyond that, if you see a weird angle where I'm like, he's hitting the <laughs> side of the inside of her vagina and she's <laughs> pretending, I'm just like, ew, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, bad angles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... I hopefully we can be more like the Netherlands. They got, they seem like they got it all figured out. I want to know what they're, I'm, I'm sure they have flaws, but they look, they're looking pretty on it's, point. It's utopia to me. I think. <laughs> <laughs> they're all um, very blonde and I'm super into like dark, sexy, black haired dudes primarily. So. Right. So that's no, the one mind. thing I can't do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They're not, <laughs> perfection does not exist after <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I had a question on my part. I do like an advice segment on my podcast sometimes. And, uh, I, I'm pretty upfront about like how I'm, fu I'm a fucking idiot. I don't really know anything, but I try to give my best advice. Um, <laughs> but there was one I had, it was very like, it was heavy, like, but, and it was like related to, um, religion, but, um, and it was something that was very, I kind of just like said, I'll basically, um, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> basically it was someone who it was very they're very young i think they were like 14 or 15 or something and they're uh they uh they identified they were like they're gay like they're lesbian and their father was a pastor mm. and like their grandmother was like really uh like advocating for like conversion therapy and shit and like mm. the dad was like scared of people at the church finding out because he'd lose his job or something and they'd lose their house and everything. And it was a lot of pressure to put on a fucking, like a kid. Oh my God. Yeah. So I, I wanted to talk about it on my podcast, but I was like, I don't, I honestly don't know how to help. I gave advice to be like, just try to get through to your dad and say that it's love is it's fine. It doesn't matter who I love. It's like, it, it doesn't, I don't know. It was really frustrating. And it's like the fact that religion, like, I think that's like the biggest conflict of interest of all time is if you're getting paid to be a pastor, like that's fucking yeah. weird. Why are you getting paid to be a pastor? Just do that. Just do that in your spare time. Why are you taking like, it's so weird to have that as a job. I don't, I don't know. So is that like, well, I'll push back on that because it's a lot of work for sure. It is. Yeah, for sure. But like, I, like I want to get paid. Like I've been guilted before. Like people are like, why is she advertising her channel? She's like a spiritual person. And I'm like, because I'm working my ass off on this and I just, well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but, um, just to the, to the point where it's, um, where you can, well, priests aren't by the way, I, I think. And that's why they're, they, they're given housing and stuff. They're okay. like given, at least the last that I knew. So yeah. that's well, kind obvious, of yeah. for that. Obviously, I wasn't trying to fucking like, don't, hey, you know, don't make any money from this. But I was saying like, because <laughs> that's like, but in terms of like when that the money you make, I guess, yeah, what I'm trying to say is the, mo the money that you're making from a church that is actively going against your daughter's well-being, 
that was, yeah. I guess that was what I had a, an issue with. So why would you even stay yeah. there? Just fucking quit. Find a new church, right? Uh, I don't know. So well, what, yeah, we, people choose their family or their their church and their religion more often than their families. It's it's heartbreaking. That's that's frustrating. But would sorry, you, what was your question? I didn't oh, what uh, you. just if um, would someone who is more versed in the whole culture of, I guess, religion and stuff. Um, I guess if you had any advice for this uh, person. I do. Um, unfortunately, it's really difficult and it's not a fun answer, but um, you do have to create boundaries and like a safe place for yourself when your family is not able to get on board with your sexuality. And the most grace I can give to people like her father and her grandmother is that religious indoctrination is no joke. Like if you talk to someone like Megan Phelps Roper, I don't know if you're familiar. She um, was in the Westboro Baptist church where they would go to funerals and hold signs. That said, oh, like, God yeah. Hates yeah. F words. Yeah. Um, that was like a full on indoctrination since she was born of this idea that gay people are living in sin, that they're choosing actively to live in this perversion and they are perverts and like Jeez. we're given, yeah, we're given really, really dark scripts and depending, the church keeps like softening it a little, like it started with being gay as a sin. And then I think when they started realizing, oh, some people really are coming out of the womb, uh, very right. gay. Yeah which is like arguably probably almost everybody like they have this idea of like well sexual trauma leads to being gay and it's just that that is absolutely not statistically remotely right. true and um and if it were almost all of us would be gay because there's a lot of a sexual assault and you know yeah exactly it's bad. Um, but yeah, so now the narrative has shifted from it's okay to be gay, God made you this way, but it's not okay to act on homosexuality. So in other words, you're supposed to oh. white knuckle it and be celibate for the rest of your life and ha ha live oh happily God. ever after. Yeah, it's, <laughs> right. it's really terrible. So um, there are incredible resources that I can give this young woman and I hope she's listening or people in her situation. There is a mother mm -hmm. and father duo called Freed Hearts. And um, Hearts. I can send you this link too, so you could link it. But they um, basically had to choose between their child and their church. And they wound up making the very difficult decision of choosing their child because they lost nice. their whole community. They lost their church. And now they advocate and help walk other parents through that journey because you know, wow. we can poo-poo people that are anti-LGBTQ and just oversimplify it, but that doesn't really work. Like, like I said, indoctrination is real and it's hard to get out of. And you mm -hmm. parents will often need that resource to get out of that indoctrination. Right. Um, but then if they can't catch up with you and you're still interested in staying in, in Christianity, find me, God is Gray. And I have so many resources. If you email GodIsGrayXO at gmail.com, there's an automatic reply of all these incredible authors and writers who are talking about why gay people aren't going to hell and um, wow. you know sexual ethics and all kinds of things. So there is a way to intellectually understand that you are okay. But more than that, like God is love. You are made this way. You are made in God's image. You're all good. And if people keep abusing you, which is what it is, if they keep telling you it's not okay to be who you fundamentally are, you're not okay to love who you were born to love. Unfortunately, a lot of people do have to separate from that. And that's why there's so many gay pride parades and so many gay spaces because a lot of gay people or LGBTQ people have lost their family families and they had to reform a new family. Right. And um yeah, it sucks. Well it's better than I that's better advice than I could ever give. So <laughs> you, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, there's resources. You're all good. That's God good loves you. Yeah. There are resources. It's I uh, think it's just hard to tell people like, yeah, you might have to separate from your family even for a bit, but it's it's the same yeah. thing. It's like an abusive relationship, you have to separate yourself. Even if it's temporary, you have to set mm -hmm. those boundaries. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um back to uh, I guess um I guess yeah, back to the fact of uh, people, you know, making a living 
right of you know talking about religion and stuff um there are other there's another uh youtuber <laughs> or duo i guess that uh <laughs> has been pretty i feel like also gave a really bad name to uh to people who uh to christians uh because of the i am sure you saw like the cody Cody Noel's video I they did on. I was not going to say that, but I was just thinking that. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I feel like they made them very popular. Uh, the girl defined. Uh, so yeah. you had like, I guess, beef with them, I guess. <laughs> YouTube Christian beef. Yeah, Christian beef. You should, yeah, you should have dropped fucking uh, like rap tracks. Like An diss album. Tracks. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been tight. <laughs> Christian it would track. not have been tight. It would have been horrible. I would have. <laughs> that's very embarrassing. But yeah, hypothetically, it would have been tight. <laughs> um, so, do you want to go through that again and see what what kind of happened? I guess like we could talk about um, just other Christian people who are, I guess, and how you feel about them, kind of like putting like this negative like view of Christianity into people's you know minds. Yeah. So I had actually like. I've always wanted to write the book that I just wrote and um, I wasn't having success finding a publisher. So I actually started on YouTube because I found Girl Defined, Paul and Morgan and mm -hmm. a couple other voices. And they were saying the same toxic things that had just like destroyed parts of my life for a period of time, like destroyed right. my, my sexual confidence and, and so many different things. Yeah. Um, so I actually picked my camera up out of pure frustration because I heard <laughs> another Christian YouTuber say that God was her birth control. And I was like, okay, so you guys are all going to vote against pro-choice and you're going to close down Planned Parenthoods that offer, you know, birth yeah. control and all of these things. And then you're going to tell girls and you don't know their economic situation. You don't know their relational situation. You don't know anything about them. And you're just going to say, Oh, don't worry. God's got it. God's your birth control. I was like, I was storming around my house in a fury, like just losing it. And I had this camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did my diss track then. Didn't, didn't share it with the world. Right. Um, but that's how it all started. So I was very familiar and I had no subscribers, obviously, as you start. And mm. some of the first things I did was respond to Girl to Find. And I was trying to be as compassionate as possible because I'm like, well, everyone on YouTube is a human being and I'm not trying to like destroy anyone or right. clap back in a mean way. But at the same time, like if people are committing suicide over these things, if people are having sexual dysfunction or abortions, like yeah, I have to say something yeah, it's about harmful. this. Yeah. Yeah. So we had this long pattern. I, I feel like I can actually, I need to thank Girl to Find because I think most people found me through those videos that I was making. Right. And, um, but anyway, it got to this point where they put out this video where they were like, everyone's so mean to us and why can't we just get along? <laughs> and, um, and I was kind of like, oh, dang, like I'm one of those people that's just such a dick to them and, oh, gosh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Everything they say, I have something negative to say about it. So I emailed them and I wrote this email that was just like, I acknowledge that you may never want to talk to me, but I would love to talk to you and, and maybe we can squash this beef and see what we have in common and mm -hmm. whatever. So they wrote back and they were like, yes, would love to really appreciate it. And I was like, living off the high of that. I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be such a great example. Like yeah. two people with these really different opinions sitting down and I'm in my kitchen and I remember it like it was yesterday. And someone is like, did you see Girl Defines conference? And they send me this clip where they have all these beautiful, young, impressionable ladies in oh, the audience no. and they're on stage and they're like, you know, some people claim to be Christian and they're leading you astray and they're saying that it's okay to be gay and that's totally wrong. For example, this girl and the, the screen comes on and I'm there affirming LGBTQ people. That's so and then fucked up. <laughs> after we had our email exchange. <laughs> Dang. And I was honestly, I was so hurt. For sure. Just just imagining the impressionable girls. Cause I was like, wait, you didn't have a conversation with me. You didn't talk to me. Now you're making assumptions. And not only that, but you're telling, I don't even know how many young women do not listen to this person. She's dangerous and she's wrong. Oh my God. And, um, yeah. 
So even that was like, okay, fine. But I was like, well, now I'm going to make a video. And I was like, they (laughs) stabbed me in the back. And I feel bad in some ways because my audience are like wolves. If I say someone hurt my feelings, hot damn, they go after that person. And I love my God is great community for it. But at the same time, I'm always like, try to like i don't know but you can't control how people are going to behave or how they're going to react yeah i always i've (laughs) even said like in some of my videos i'm like don't send this person hate i'm just talking about it i'm making even some people i'm just literally just making like harmful jokes just like playful stuff it's like yeah literally like if you go to their comments it'd be like just from people being like ugu curtis Curtis Connor just fucking got you. Or Curtis <laughs> Curse Town roasting you. And it's like, no, nah, it's just can we just have fun? I don't know. But that's yeah. so dude, that's so that's the funniest thing. When like uh for Girl to find and like Dr. Winnister to be like, uh gay people are fucked up and they are going to hell and I hate them. And then you say that and then they're like everyone's being so mean to me why are they being mean yeah, they just play the fucking yeah. victim that's uh that's annoying evangelicals love it's called the persecution complex they're like we are being persecuted for being christian right. they're like you're being called out for being a dick. yeah for being Those a shithead two different things yeah and um but at the same time like i come from this background so i do have so much like grace and space for the for where they're at. Like, I don't Mm. know how much they realize how much I understand what it is to be in their headspace. Obviously I don't know everything about what they think or believe, but like, I know how it feels. I used to make anti-abortion artwork in high school and I wore a chastity ring and I argued seven day or six day earth with my biology teacher. Like I was the nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) Anti-abortion artwork. Yeah, it was a paper mache woman, nine months pregnant, holding a gun to her belly, and I called it abortion. Dang. Yeah. Holy. And to clarify, abortion breaks my heart, and I think it's devastating, and I wish it never had to happen. But if you research pro-life policy versus pro-choice policy, pro-choice policy statistically prevents abortion astronomically better right. than pro-life policy because pro-life policy is like no sex ed no planned parenthoods no access to birth control if our if my religion as a corporate leader doesn't allow birth control then i don't have to give it to my female employees like that's the american way and yeah. then they have the audacity to shut down all access like some people as you might know, we don't have health care in this country, which is insane. Mm-hmm. And um, and a lot of people, their primary caregiver, and mine was for um, like five years or so, was Planned Parenthood. That was the only doctor I had because it was the only right. free access I had. And you could come in with like a cold. And they're like, well, we're supposed to be talking about your <laughs> hoo-ha, but <laughs> you know, I guess I'm yeah, the only doctor. while you're here, I guess, sure. Yeah. So all these people are like shutting down all of that access and then they're yelling about people having abortions. And I'm like, well, you took away every chance they had to prevent yeah. a pregnancy. Yeah. So shut up. Yeah. <laughs> like do better. Shut up. Do better. <laughs> yeah. It's like now that, I don't know. It's just so, they always got to be fucking up in arms about something that it literally doesn't matter at all. I, obviously it matters. I'm not saying abortion doesn't matter, but like it's literally like access to safe abortion if you have to do that. That's important. And if they shut down all the people's resources and like access to that, like they're just creating more, like way more traumatic things than a safe abortion. So it's like, oh yeah. Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> this is what happens when I talk about uh i know like it's all too heavy right i mean as as whenever i do talk about religion i it's it sucks that it always has to i always just talk about like the negative parts of it because that's all i really see and that's all i really have seen um and there's not really any uh um obviously negative things are louder than positive things like i respond to hate comments more than fucking like positive comments uh, i know right <laughs> me but, too <clears throat> but i mean it, it would be nice if they're which is which is why i wanted to do this to like actually talk to 
uh, someone who belongs to Christianity and um, isn't shaming people and is accepting of of LGBTQ plus people and and um, just just not an asshole. So uh, yeah, I try not to be. I think <laughs> yeah, you good. do a good job. You do a very good <laughs> job. <laughs> I mean, if I could like end on more positivity, mm-hmm. you know, Let's I would say that. like the the bones and the like the main tenets of faith, which again, when Jesus was confronted by people like this that are so obsessed with the rules and obsessed with like, you know, we're supposed to be doing X, Y, Z. Like, this is why my channel is called God is Gray, because I actually do believe that divinity resides in absolute truth. Like I believe in absolute truth, but I also believe that this world is very complicated and nuanced and two things can be true at the same time. Seven things can be true at the same time. Like, especially when you're talking about some gigantic topic like BLM or abortion or like, there are many angles to look at that elephant and conquer it to figure out how to fix the problem. But evangelicals and, and a lot of like, just people in general will just like, plant themselves in black and whites and be like, just make it illegal or just do this or whatever. And it's like, just put your blue lives matter flag on and keep supporting the police. And it's like, no, we are saying (laughs) there is a lot going on here and we have to talk about it and address it. So that's why I call it God is gray because it's like, they, these are gray areas. These are more complicated than just saying, just do this or else you'll go to hell. That to me is lazy. It's not only like spiritually abusive, but it's lazy. Yeah. So (laughs) the positive thing is like, Jesus is dope. God is badass. Like living a spiritually attuned life, giving people love, exercising and practicing love and, and giving that to others and being generous in whatever gifts I have or capacity I can is a really, really fulfilling, beautiful way to live. Mm -hmm. And I also see it as an adventure. Like for me in the spiritual space, I do believe in a secular person might call it being a psychic. The Christian verbiage of it is being prophetic, but like, I'll get like little signs and wonders of like, basically you're going in the right direction or why don't you open this door and see what's behind it. And I really see my spiritual life as this exciting adventure of discovery. And to me, like to anyone wondering, life is this journey. You are exploring. And I truly believe if you're committed to love and you're committed to being a generous, good person, that exploration will lead to beautiful places. And if you mess up, if you hurt someone, if you hurt yourself, life is long and you have the ability to pivot, to learn from it. And and don't accept that invitation to shame. Religion too, I think is so despicable in the way that it brings more shame and fear to people when in reality, it's like, get that conviction, get that sign of like, oh, I should not have said that, or I should not have done that. You apologize, you figure out why you did it, and then you move forward. You're not like crying on Sunday and begging God to forgive you. (laughs) You you are forgiven, you're okay, keep going, you know? Great. Yeah. yeah. So well, that was all positive. That was <laughs> it's all good. That was beautiful. <laughs> you got some applause. Guys. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think that's probably a good way. A uh, good way to end it. On a positive note, we we're talking about good <laughs> things. Um, yes. I well, I'm a Christian now. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, <Kurt> guys. Got <laughs> saved. <laughs> oh, damn it! I got <laughs> saved. <laughs> shoot <laughs> no sex with your lady anymore yeah, sorry <laughs> um <laughs> uh well brenda thank you so much for coming on the podcast thanks for uh you know being open to uh to chatting and uh mm-hmm. yeah this is fun this is very very eye-opening i don't feel um so much hatred i guess <laughs> to uh to uh religion i well i do but you know what i mean there is it's nice to know that there is still there are good people uh, who I'm with you. We feel exactly the same way. Trust me. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I guess everyone can follow you on YouTube. God is gray. Uh, get the book, pre-order the book. If you're listening yeah. to the podcast, uh, it's mandatory. You have to pre-order the book. <laughs> and, Perfect. Uh, I'll put all the links and stuff in the description. So, uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Um, uh, I always say, I love you all. God bless.
God bless. <laughs>